He is Robin Leach. He is Jada Martin. This is Car Keys. It is indeed. And for those who want to listen about things that are going forward, here comes today's show. Um, Jay, this is for you. Um, there's, a, there's stories of uh, uh, discussing the reality of the future for AVs, and Robin's postscript of true self-drivable vehicles is making the uh, waves in the uh, automotive business news department. Says uh, Ford has bailed out on AVZ, AVs. I think VW has bailed out on AV uh, uh, progress, and the reality, in my opinion, Jay, and I can't wait to hear yours for the re- our listeners, is that I don't think that there's really going to be a big uh, profitable market and or confidence market in AVs and self-driving vehicles, except for maybe, where I might agree with you, at low speeds uh, around urban driving. I don't think it's realistic to uh, want to be on the road with self-driving cars traveling at 70 miles an hour plus. Uh, I really don't know whether I think that we should be on the roads with self-driving tractor trailers, which are already apparently, although with drivers in the seats to take over if something goes wrong, uh, driving down the roads uh, in self-driving mode either. Comment? Yes, always the same ones. This is not a news story. Uh, I think it's uh, automot- uh, autonomous driving Self-driving cars will happen in the in the uh, long distant term. future, not and in not the short term. Future. And uh, I don't think it's for every driving condition. And uh, so, uh, you know, for those of us who live in rural areas like we do, um, the, the advantages of uh, autonomous driving are, are limited. And, and um, but we, we've We've gone over that. Uh, being on the highway uh, with people with autonomous cars versus um, people driving, uh, I think that in 80 or 90 percent of the cases, we'd probably be better off surrounded by autonomous cars than people driving. But that's that is an opinion of mine. I just don't have a high opinion of drivers in general. Uh, but but don't mind that. Um, and uh, I do think that, and along with cars becoming more and more complicated, I think we have to, in the long term, review uh, who gets to drive what, and and people need to know their cars better. Cars are getting to be very, very complex, as we know, and that's just not as far as autonomous driving, but all the car controls, um, and obviously for people who work on them, it, it's, it's becoming really very difficult. Anyway, so I, you know, we'll see. Um, Things will evolve. It, it won't happen overnight, no. Uh, we will see, Jay. And you and I probably won't be around to really see what the true time is. You might be, but I probably won't. And uh, I don't think there are computer programs writable or available to cover all the potential things that could interrupt the success of self-driving cars. Uh, I am very con- uh, conscious of the fact that there's a lot more uh, frequent road lining going on in many places, and by frequent, I mean more than once a year, as I see new line, new lining uh, showing up on roads that were probably not lined less than or more than six months ago, which is good because right now with the uh, uh, technology for self-driving cars, they need to have well-marked roads. Yes, they do. There is a firm that's also discuss, uh, trying to work on uh, – Lousy weather self-driving cars. That's another problem, which is not going to go away anytime soon uh, in, in high snow states, um, snowstorm states where roads get covered, where lines get covered up, and road sides get covered up so that you don't really know where the edges of the roads are. And self-driving cars cannot operate in these, uh, well, they may, uh, they may claim they can, but cannot, in my opinion, operate safely in unless the road markings and the road sides are clearly known to the computers that are reading these okay, so uh, roads, okay? Let's talk about drivable cars. No, I don't think we don't have to talk about drivable cars as an argument to this. No, drivable I mean, cars, cars you can actually you, you drive. talk you bring it up in in the drivers need to know more about their cars. That isn't going to happen either. 
Wait, what? Wait. Uh, I'm sorry. As 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 the referee says, wait, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, wait, what? The, right. no, the reason I'm saying wait, what is because it's like okay, I get it. I get it with self-driving cars. I thought uh, Jay was talking about cars that like you could drive at this moment, whether or yeah. self-driving or not. So yeah. let's talk about cars you can drive at this moment, right? Self-driving or not? Okay, go ahead, Jay. Well, uh, I was just reading about a few new cars coming out on the market and. Um, uh, one of them, and I had actually read about it a week or two ago, uh, the new Honda CRV. You know, when e- everything SUV is always very popular, and small SUVs have grown to be much bigger vehicles than they used to be. And the last version of the Honda CRV right. is not a compact SUV by um, any current standard. By any definition, that was a definition of a compact SUV. The HRV ago. has taken over that. that and and um, the. the the, the CRV has now has a, a hybrid model in, in, in the model range, and um, and and I read all about it, and it acts the, the ICE engine run, acts like a generator, and then transfers the power to the electric motor, and it gets very complicated, and, um, and it looks all fine and dandy, and I was kind of interested, and then I at the end of the article, you you gain like one or two miles per gallon, and you. And you lose a, a ton of space in the trunk. And I'm, I get back to my point about uh, hybrids, and I know you don't agree with me on that. Is why go to double the trouble having both uh, electric motors and and gas engines in the in you know in okay. the same car? Let me know when I can chime in. You can chime in right now. Okay. As to the Honda CRV hybrid, which is nice to have it on the road. Um, the idea of one to two miles a gallon better than an ICE internal combustion engine capability, which has increased in mileage capability in the last uh, several years, for sure, is not, I agree, adequate to make them an alternative to an IC, a, a, a very efficient ICE engine alone mm-hmm. or an electric car alone. But uh, the Toyota RAV4, which has been hybridized for the last three years, um, is doing a much better job of mileage capability, in my opinion. Toyota has been doing a great job with their mileage capability cars in hybrid in hybrid form uh, than some other manufacturers. Uh, negates the uh, argument that a hybrid SUV is not uh, more efficient uh, in one sense. I believe the Jeep Cherokee E version, which is a hybrid version of the, of the Grand Cherokee, uh, I should say, instead of the Cherokee, because that does not have a hybrid version, um, is also doing significantly better than one to two miles per gallon over the ICE version. Um, I, these all are cars that are, that, are, that, are, that are out there for the public to buy, but maybe we should segue into one of the other topics, Jay, that I warned you I was going to talk about, which was the... Uh, uh, problem of affordability for these cars as um, inflation takes hold on cost co- components costs and other uh, parts of the getting the vehicle from the production to the dealer's lot uh, is showing up in terms of higher sticker prices on for new vehicles for sure. And uh, um, we have talked over the years of what the average cost of new cars was. It used to be in the 30s, and now it's in the 40s, and it's not going down anytime soon. Right. Um, the, the batteries, costs for the components of batteries are escalating uh, way ahead of anybody's desired schedule instead of going the other way. We're now talking about environment of, of digging up the ocean floor for components for electric batteries, which is going to become an arguable situation and maybe in courts uh, long term. Uh, I, where do you see the cost of cars uh, ever stopping from increasing, Jay? Do you have any comment? Well, I don't think, the, well, it's like everything else. I don't think the cost of cars is going to stop increasing. Um, Who's going to buy them, though, other than the wealthy class? I, I, are they going to become more affordable to the masses, right. quote, unquote? Um, I, I Actually, I, I think we've hit that critical point because, like you said, the, the, the average uh, uh, price of a new car is well into the $40,000, and these compact SUVs are now all in the $40,000, and they 
arguably are the, you know, the mainstream, uh, quote unquote, family cars nowadays. Which is why, it, you know, forget everything I've said in the, in the in the past. My next car will probably be a very simple uh, ICE engine with a manual gearbox. Um, uh, admittedly, maybe only a two seater. Uh, but one of the two uh, BRZ or Toyota sports car uh, yeah, out right. there, they get great gas mileage. Um, I love the car. I haven't driven one yet, and, but I will. And um, uh, that's just me. That's a car for me uh, in the next yeah, uh, well, few years. Yeah, and, well, and you and I, to a certain extent, are in that uh, minimal category of people who can be satisfied with that size vehicle. Yeah, but Robin, you don't need any new cars. You have that has nothing to do with this has nothing to do with the topic we're discussing, Jay. Um, it's nice to know what you want to drive. Um, I have a car in probably every category of car out there. Um, nothing very new, uh, and yes, I won't be buying many cars, many new cars. Whether I ever get to electric or not is a big question mark in my life, in my mind, and. Uh, the listeners don't need to listen to us talk about what we but will drive. Here, here, well, actually, I'm going to... Uh, Chime in. Great, Jay. No, uh, Jill. I'm going to put up my yellow card and say, you know, one of the things that is actually rather entertaining is listening to people talking about cars that they actually like and like to drive. Right. Because when you get to, when you get right down to it, uh, cars are both utilitarian and, you know, you've got a connection to it. It's fun. Remember Back to the Future? What was that? The, the that, DeLorean? The, yeah, there the DeLorean. Bunch, there oh. are a bunch of them that have been coming up on the market in, in recent times, and some of them are actually in pretty good shape. And what was uh, the story with the DeLorean? It, it was it was, it was oh, a unibody? Was, uh, I know it was the wings. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, it was, was produced in Ireland. What was his name? Um, say the gazillion times. And he got busted for drug dealing because he financed his car company in Ireland. That, those were Who, the John DeLorean? Oh, John DeLorean. John DeLorean. Yeah, yeah except well, that. I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> how, <laughs> the, was it name. really? Was uh, it, did, did he really? And yeah, that was what, alleged to be the for, situation. Yeah, yeah. And who alleged. Was, it and, may have well been true, okay? But, 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 but no, then. He, he went to jail. He got arrested. He was convicted. Yeah. But here's, here's the. And I, I don't remember what this connection is, Robin. Maybe you do. But what was the Lee Iacocca John DeLorean connection? Um, there was one. I'd have to go back. You're taking yeah, catching me by surprise. It'd be interesting to talk about DeLorean yeah. because the, the the whole story. It, it's a sad story, really, because the idea was great. It goes back to the '90s when Ireland was trying to um, develop its economy and. Uh, was trying to attract capital from from elsewhere in the world, and so they made very they made it very attractive uh, in the form of I don't know if they were su- uh, providing subsidies, but anyway, from a tax standpoint, it was very advantageous to go in and and, and really? settle in Ireland. Right. Um, and so John DeLorean took advantage of that. He wanted to build a sports car, an American sports car, but he ended up building it in Ireland with a French powertrain that was a horrible, horrible, horrible engine, which was Peugeot's V6 engine that was right. totally underpowered. So he meant well, um, but it ended up being a very heavy car, underpowered, uh, and it was made famous by two things. One, its owner going to jail and, and, and the car... Back to the future. Back into the future. Exactly. Well, it was all aluminum, too, and it was stainless steel. Was it a unibody uh, and it, there and no it had the gull wings? options right? in, the, in the DeLoreans. And it was a successor to, uh, shall we dare, bring up the subject of Bricklin, which yeah. I had until recently. And the they only story. made 3,500 of them, and they built those in Canada because it was more tax advantageous. Uh, but the quality control uh, or, the deve- or the development uh, was very poorly thought out when, with, with one of the Achilles heels of that vehicle being they did not like cold weather because their, their shells, which were uh, epoxy plastic, um, did not uh, hold shape well when the temperatures went down uh, below 32 degrees. And if you were in the Northeast and had one, you would see the corners of the doors, the corners of the hood, the corners of the rear hatch flare up and uh, leave the uh, um, plane of their surfaces um, not in sync with the other parts of the body that, with which they were uh, next to so 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 it was um, 
aesthetically but, unpleasing. But we're going back to driving cars that were fun. But, they were, it was fun. I had it. It was also heavy, as Jay mentioned about the DeLorean. It had a good engine choice, I thought, uh, in an AMC four-barrel V8 in the first year of production. We switched over to a Ford uh, two-barrel V8 for the second year until they quit production. And uh, that was a fun car to drive. Uh, plus, I think it still looked great, and I think the DeLorean still looks great. So, quick question, one. because heavy, I, I'm, I might not know the terminology, but underpowered, was the Bricklin underpowered? No, no. it was not. Right, and the, the DeLorean was DeLorean what? You know, they did this with the Ford Mustang. They made made Ford Mustangs in various forms uh, after the, the 65 uh, debut of them, and uh, some of them were... were I'll be underpowered or said to be underpowered. It is a subjective, to a certain degree, point in car productions when they bring out cars with engines that are inadequate for what the uh, the, 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 sort expectation of the, of the expectations of the car are. are. Well, like it, like it or not, you know, if it's 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 sort of like somebody saying, "Yeah, that 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 meal was kind of eh." Uh, or yeah, that well, it, it, one you know, way or the other, word gets around, and if if that's true. you're personal interaction with the vehicle is, wow, this is great, but boy, I just wish it would go. Well, let's transpose this to conversation to the Miata, for example, which came out uh, way back when and was a, is a still a fantastically successful car, although the sales are way down because maybe it just is not functional for a large portion of the population that would not need a vehicle or to have one vehicle. But everybody complained about the power of that engine and it took and Miata st- <coughs> t- stood or stuck with it <coughs> for the most part, and never did bring out a second engine option. Unlike the uh, RX-7, which I had two of in my history of car ownership, and I still have the, the last one I bought. Uh, when they had two versions of the Wankel rotary engine uh, with two different horsepowers, um, so you know you, the press and the people are <coughs> can be big judges. <coughs> excuse me. Big judges of success of certain types oh, right. of and it make, on the make, n- make no mistake. And unless you actually have the interaction with the car yourself, you really shouldn't uh, base it on what you hear because it's you know it, it's not objective, typically. But so here's the you know so as the Loreans go, um, we have only one on one for sale or going through an auction right now on on bring a trailer, but in the last year or so, there have been uh, at least a dozen or so that sold. And to give you an idea of prices, they go from anywhere from uh, as low as in the $29,000, $36,000, all the way up to over $100,000 for probably a very nice example of the car. So do people, did people tweak them? Because, because Back to the Future is coming to a theater near you uh, on Broadway, and you can just bet your bottom... Well, here, here. That, that the DeLorean, the, the, the car is going to be part of the show. Okay. So I don't. There's a, there, just uh, back in July, one of them sold for. It's the only one I see that sold for over a hundred thousand dollars. It had five hundred and sixty nine miles. So, uh, you know, gas was put in it twice, probably at most. It was fresh. Um, which is kind of ridiculous, right? Okay. Um, but, I'd but like to anyway, move on from this specialty yeah, car yeah, thing but because not many people listening know what a DeLorean is. So oh, they can think watched, this is uh, interesting. Those of us who are old enough saw Back it. to the Future. Yeah, and I of... actually saw the real the movie car. In That's right. The movie theater. And and never never underestimate the power of imagination. There are five minutes left, Robin. What would you like to talk about? Well, my other topic that I had sent to Jay before we was was the used car market for mass sellers is in big trouble, and uh, it may be it may bode well for people who can't afford new cars because. Used car prices may be coming down. On the other hand, because new car prices are going up, used car prices may maintain their, their also their upward swing in, in recent months. Uh, however, some of these mass market sellers I talked uh, car CarMax is one, uh, Carvana is another one, and there are other people in that uh, business uh, have found that they have bought up inventory at prices that were uh, once uh, rising rather uh, fast, and now they're sinking, and they're caught with vehicles that they paid too much for, so they can't make profits on them, so their businesses are in trouble. 
I don't know whether that will bode well for people who know how to go looking for used cars or not, uh, but uh, uh, the used car market is sort of topsy-turvy in my opinion, and I don't know where it's going uh, short-term. Much Try south term. would be my vote. All right. Jay, do you want to vote on that? Yeah, I mean, we, we read the same things. Carvana lost a half a billion dollars in the last yeah, quarter on the three and a half. Well, how do you oh, not? I want to bring that. up one thing to interrupt both of you. Um, I am testing out a pellet in, uh, in my gas tank of one of my vehicles that is claimed to increase the mileage over what the, anything that the sticker says it can get. Um, it, they cost $25 for five pellets. You're meant to put one in per tank full. I guess you need to drain your tank uh, each time before you put a new pellet in, or else you're wasting money. The jury is out on whether it's actually working or not, in my opinion. I have to report back to the seller of this item eventually, but I'm only on three that. pellets so far. Okay, I, and I can't wait either because you know what that reminds me of? Not, oh, yes. Lionel Trains, okay? The really cool pellet. <laughs> yes, you put pellets. That's right. That was that was good. That was fun because that was – and we always seem to run out of pellets. I don't know what happened. It's like dog ate it or something. But, well, uh, I'm using them in a Jeep Cherokee. Four-cylinder, non-turbo version, and <laughs> I will report smoke? in a later edition of this show as to whether they really are working or not. All right, Jay, you've got one minute and thirty-three safety, seconds yeah. to say something safety-wise that I agree. Safety-wise, yeah. I, I think we're always. I think there. You know, we always talk about the same things, but uh, uh, I think at this season again, watch out for cyclists. Uh, I found cyclists this weekend who actually changed sides of the roads. They had no lights and decided to bike on the left side of the road facing traffic, um, which was actually a smart move. Was it a legal move? Was it uh, what you're supposed to do? No, but I think they, they were smart in doing so. They knew the sun was hitting them in the face. I was coming behind them, couldn't see them, and they were actually making uh, the crossover, and they were going to bike uh, uh, on the left side of the road where they could see traffic coming. Just and like one more quick safety running. thing is watch out for headlightless or lightless for cars driving after dusk because they are out there, and they are very dangerous because you cannot see them coming at you. Or so here's the tip. You. Flash your lights at them aggressively. That's Make true. Their lights on. Do you? Oh, yeah, I do. Absolutely. I do all the time. But yep. you, <laughs> And I usually see lights go on after they've gone by me, which is the good news part of that. Uh, but some of the other people, <clears throat> others I've tried to do that to have never d- have done nothing about turning on lights as if they don't even know what I was doing. There's that, but you, you people they definitely learn learn by repetition. You see enough people flashing you, you're going to go. I wonder why they're flashing me. Oh, he must know me, and then it, it evolves into you know. So some one person okay. will say to another person, hey, and guess what? You find out that people are trying to tell you something. Okay. Until next week. He is Robin Leach. He is Jada Market. This is Car Keys. <laughs>